things for better living through chemistry. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Tonight, in celebration of George Washington's birthday, we present a comedy melodrama, The Plot to Kidnap General Washington. Edmund Gwen is our star, and our play, based on material supplied by Carl Carmer, was written by Joseph and Janet Ruscall. DuPont presents The Cavalcade of America with Edmund Gwen as Hercules Mulligan in The Plot to Kidnap General Washington. <laughs> General George Washington, West Point, in the year 1780. The commander-in-chief and his aides are discussing a secret report just received from agents behind the enemy lines. Splendid, gentlemen, splendid. Complete to the last detail. Amazing, our New York espionage. When Clinton takes a bath, we learn of it before he's dry. Right in <laughs> perfume, General Washington. Who is this uh, partisan that keeps us so well informed at the risk of his neck, eh, Green? The tailor on Queen Street, sir. And a very talented one. His establishment is used as a gathering place by all the high British officers. I dare say he measures them for more than they bargain. Hey, Hamilton? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, what is his name again, our brave tailor? His name, sirs, is Hercules Mulligan. <laughs> Hercules Mulligan, I say, what an extraordinary tag. And look at him, all five foot of him. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead with the fitting Mulligan. <laughs> don't mind the Major. Well, not a bit of it, Colonel Stewart. But if he don't mind, there's five one and a half of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will you slip into the coat now, Colonel, please? <laughs> please? That's it, sir. Uh, easy, easy. Uh, easy does it. That's it, sir. <laughs> Taylor, you're the best confounded craftsman in the colonies. I don't know what we'd do without you. Oh, naturally, Colonel. And thank you kindly. Hmm. Mm, I take it in a wee bit at the shoulders, I think, sir. Mm -hmm. Um, observe now, Hercules, how you and your name compare to your General Washington and his rebel government. Puny but pretentious. <laughs> eh, Whig? Whig? Me? No, Taylor? Well, thread my needle, sir. I'm a non-political, non-violent nobody. A happy vegetable, you might say. My wife helps me out in back there, and my negro, Cato. Life is short. My neck is brittle. I prefer to die in bed. And thank you very kindly, sir. Bravo! Well, Colonel, one more fitting tomorrow, and you'll be the pride of the light dragoons. What? One more fitting? Yes, please, sir. But Mulligan, I told you I must have it for today. Hang it all, man. I won't be here tomorrow. I'm going away. Your regiment is moving, then? Spontaneous, so to speak? Yes, yes, man, spontaneous. Oh. Now, will you send me the coat early this evening? My goodness, rush, rush, rush. I'll try, sir, I'll try. Oh, hold still, sir, please, please, please. Just, just while I mark these alterations, sir, All will right. you? Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, just... Ra let's, ah, there, there, thank you, sir, thank you. My ginger. What about my other appointments? General Clinton himself. Scheduled for a fitting next Thursday... Shall I see him? Not unless you're planning a trip up to Delaware. <laughs> I say it's an excellent fit, Stuart. Oh? Oh, by, the way, by the way, did you hear about the newest leak to Washington's headquarters, Fleming? Indeed I did. All the earmarks of an inside espionage job, if you ask me. A spy with top connections, that's certain. He'll hang for it yet. No telling who the rascal could be, though. No telling he might be almost anybody. Why, it might even be our little friend Mulligan here, eh? Oh, oh really, sir? Eh? You well, will have your little on, joke, sir. <laughs> Wife? Cato, come out here. Yes, husband? Yes, master? Peace is fit. Cato, you'll be taking a trip up the river again tonight. Very good, master. Molly, prepare a dispatch. No, Hercules. I heard everything from the workroom. They suspect you, husband. I feel it. Oh, it's this was in jest. Only half in jest. I'm afraid for you, Hercules. Now, here's quill and paper. Now, right, wife. Write what I say. Hercules, My spelling I... is an abomination. <sighs> right. 3,000 men on board transports lying off Staten Island. Destination, Delaware. Hmm? Here. 
Take it, Cato. No, I won't let you send him. What? Hercules, if you're caught now, you'll hang, hang. I'll never hang in a better cause. Oh, come, Molly, come. Twas you that won my heart with fair words, eh? Oh, not, not how handsome and tall you are, Hercules, no. <laughs> None of that, but, but words like freedom, independence. Oh, now, Molly, when the king's men came to New York and we tried to follow Washington and were stopped, you know what that was, Molly, when all said and done, eh? Providence by Ginger. Yeah. By staying behind, we've been able to help our great general and to play some small part in the fight for liberty. Yeah, liberty. That's another word you taught me. Hmm. And I thank you very kindly. Well, wife, does uh, Cato go? Hmm? Go, Cato. Go. <sighs> Good morning, Mrs. Dawson. What can I do for you? Five yards of grey flannel, please. Five of grey flannel? Certainly, sir. Why, well, you haven't been here in a blue moon. Molly! Yes? Why, it's Mrs. Dawson. Leave your stitching. How's Jonathan? I didn't come here to chat. Why, Hitty, it's you. About time, too, eh, Molly? Hmm? Well, I should say, what yes. kept you away? And how's Jonathan? Let me have the flannel, please, and be on the way. Why, Hitty. Molly Mulligan, I didn't come here to socialize. Or to bring my trade. If every other shot wasn't out of flannel, what? what's wrong? What's wrong, yes. As though he doesn't know. As though the shop hasn't become infested with Tories and red coats. Oh, no. Mrs. Dawson, surely. Rather doesn't let me go along. What's wrong, indeed? Why, it's become a perfect scandal the way you've been cold shouldering your old friends, cavorting with king lovers. Hitty, you don't understand, really. Here you are, Mrs. Dawson. How much? Ten shillings three. Ten shillings three. There you are. Thank you. Good day. Hetty. Good day, Mrs. Mulligan. Wife? Yes, husband? Tell me again the, the instructions I received from West Point. You memorize them for me. You know, that part that went, um... Always remember, you are a confidential agent of the Republic. Yeah? And as such, instructed not only to court the king's soldiers, but to detach yourself politically... From all former friends and associates. Hmm. Long live liberty. Back to our stitching, wife. Hercules. Hmm. Why do you sit there brooding? You haven't said a word for hours. I'm lonesome. Oh. For my old friends. For even Winters and Tom Andrews and, and... Oh, wife sitting here at home night after night. No one ever comes to visit us. Never, even our relatives shun us like a plague. They, they, I'm treated like an outcast. That's part of the price we have to pay. Yes, but I'm human, dear. After all, I, I, I can't stand it. I can't I? You know why? Fetch me my coat. Where are you off to? The Hound and Horn. The Hound and Horn? Yes. Yeah. Hercules, that's where the wings yeah, get her. My coat, Molly. You mustn't. No, 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 no politics. Some, some friendly ale. Nothing more. No, they might harm you there, Hercules. Why? They're my old cronies. I know, dear, but... Oh, we'll drink together. They, they must trust me. They must. They must. Cato. Yes, mistress? Cato, follow your master to the hound and horn. Please, see that no harm comes to him. just came in. Hercules Mulligan. The turncoat. Evening, boys. <laughs> nice evening, so to speak. I should say so. What'll it be, Mr. Mulligan? 
Uh, make mine ale, Bell. Uh, by ginger, even winters. I didn't see you. How are you, friend? Eh? Uh, Tom Andrews, my old comrade. Won't you join me? Huh? You neither. Come to spy on us, Mulligan? No. Major Andre just got his, Mulligan. And Benedict Arnold will be next. He'll hang, and so will you, Mulligan, when our day comes. It's not true what you think I... Oh, throw him out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 wait. Oh, no. I'm with you. I'm with you. Out with your gun. Out with you. Out with you. Out with you. Master? Master? Oh. oh, my master. You're all cut and bleeding. Oh, oh come on. Lean on me, master. There. I will take you home. I knew it. Oh, I knew it. I, I told you not to go, my dear. Oh, what? Oh, no, Hercules. Don't talk. What I heard. Just lie still on the top Me. here and the pain will go away. Yeah, but I want to. Oh, what is it, dear? What is it you want to say? Dispatch. The dispatch is all ready to go to General Washington. I have it right here. Cato leaves in an hour. The postscript. Yeah. Right, wife. Right. Right, what you say? Right. Right. Spirit. Of the Patriots is excellent. You are listening to Edmund Gwen as Hercules Mulligan in the plot to kidnap General Washington on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Mulligan, the little New York tailor who has been furnishing General Washington with military information, has just been thrown out of a tavern by his former friends as a traitor suspect. And as our play continues, we are back at the headquarters of General Washington. General Washington. Yes, Colonel Hamilton. The dispatch, sir, was just brought by Cato, the Negro servant of Hercules Mulligan. Oh, yes, 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 our little New York tailor. Let me have it here, sir. Hmm. Ah, this is good, Hamilton. Very good indeed. What is it, sir? Mulligan has sent us valuable information about Clinton's plans. This settles it, Hamilton. This settles it. I'm Hercules, good friend. Spare no expense. Make it up with the very best cloth. With silver lace and silver spangle loops. Silver? Yes. Silver? Well, thread my needle. You must have stuck it rich, eh, Oh, richer. Hmm. You've no idea. Oh, Hercules, it was due me after all I suffered for the king. A vile wig insult. See, eh? It, uh, how, how were you rewarded by the British? Provisions. See? Tons and tons of it they're buying from me. Oh. Today alone I filled a huge order on board boats. Enough for 500 horsemen. 500 horsemen? Yes. Going where, do you know? Up the East River. Oh? Hercules and Mulligan, I... I've learned something tremendous. And since you're a sympathizer... Oh, I heard how you were thrown out of the horn and hound. Well, why shouldn't I tell you? Yeah, yeah, tell me. Tell me, friend. You're, you're a very remarkable man. Well... Yeah. Just suppose a certain great rebel creature were about to make a journey from West Point to Hartford. Suppose this creature were traveling alone with only a few aides. Suppose our General Clinton knew all about it. Suppose. Suppose. Need I say more? Oh, tell me all this. Who is this creature? Oh, I don't know that I should, but then... Again, that business at the Hound and Horn. Hercules Mulligan. We're going to kidnap George Washington. Yes, Clinton just sent 500 horsemen to intercept him on his way to Hartford. How do you know all this is? My provisions are on board. Oh. Need I say more? Uh -huh. well, I must go now, friend. Remember, silver lace on my suit. Oh, yes, silver lace. Good afternoon, Isa. Cato. Here I am, Master. Quick, you must be off to West Point. There's not a moment to lose. The dispatch, sir. No time for that. You must keep it in your head. I will, sir. How does it go? 
Change your course to Hartford. Clinton knows your plans. Repeat it, Cato. Change your course to Hartford. Clinton knows your plans. Go and fly! Wait, Cato. Stand still. I've never seen this British officer before. Is the proprietor in? Uh, can I help you, sir? I have a suit here. I want pressed and perfume. Pressed and perfume? Yes, sir. Oh, fashionable place that you have here. Thank you, sir. I want to have a chat with you, Taylor. Yes, sir. Is that your Negro boy standing there in the corner? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes. Excuse me a moment, sir. Uh, Cato, run along now. Buy me that bolt of lace. The one I just spoke of. Yes, master. I go. Wait, Cato. Sir? Never mind. Run along. Sir? I hear that you send Cato frequently for lace. Don't you? Hmm. Usually at midnight, eh? Strange the way he seems to find it necessary to travel up the Hudson for it. Why, not at all, sir. We... You know the entire garrison here, don't you? Why, yes, sir, yes. But I... I don't have the honor to place you, sir, as it were. But uh, I have heard of you, Hercules Mulligan. You heard of me? More than you know. In 75, were you not chosen one of the rebel committee of correspondents? Me, sir? In 76, were you not among the band of misguided patriots who destroyed the leaden statue of King George? Come, come, Taylor, confess. No use your denying, I know all about you. So you do, by Jesus. But believe me, sir, they were the fires of youth. I'm a subdued man now, non-political. Really? Believe me, sir, believe me. I'll leave you at present your work. But you'll hear from me again, you may depend on it. Good day, Taylor. Good day, sir. Oh, sir! Yes? Who shall I send the suit to? Your name, sir, please. General Benedict Arnold of His Majesty's Army. <laughs> Two officers to reason with you again. Well, Mulligan, sit up, man. No use questioning me again, sir. My home is my castle. This cell is my home. I am not at home today, and thank you very kindly. How would you like to see your wife again, Taylor? My wife? <laughs> You've not permitted me to see her for five whole months, and I don't joke, I beg you. It's no joke. You can return to her. Is it worth it, fool, to lose your wife, your business, your freedom, perhaps your head, when you can have them all again by uh, cooperating with us? Do so, Taylor. Look here. We know you've had traffic with Washington. How else could our kidnapped plans have gone astray? And we can prove what we say. We've finally caught your Negro lad. He's about to confess everything. You're doomed, Taylor. Eh? Huh? Well, just how would you have me cooperate with you? Huh. You will send a dispatch to Washington, which we will dictate. Your Negro will carry it. He'll obey you. Well, this is your last chance, fellow, or you'll surely hang. Well, fellow? Well? Gentlemen, I am a simple tailor with a simple mind. I don't know what in the world you're talking about. Prisoner. Prisoner. Yes, Tungi. Man, I admire you. You've got spunk. Hold out, Taylor. They've got no real evidence against you. Hold out just a little while longer and they'll have to let you go. I'll hold out till doomsday by Ginger. <laughs> Oh, Ollie. Oh, Hercules, my dear. 
been so long, so... Where else but you? The hair. Yes, Molly, my... My hair's turned white. Oh, no. Oh, there, 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 now. Oh, no. I went through a lot in prison, but... But they didn't learn a thing from me about Ginger. Not a thing, no. Nor from Cato, bless him, either. Oh, right. oh, here, here, come now. Molly, Molly, no tears. No, he, he wasn't so bad. They're really, really. Except for missing you. Missing you all these nine months. Right. Molly, my dear, dear wife. Oh, my poor darling. I've missed you so. Yes, but tell me, wife, why have you moved way out here to the end of town? I scoured the city looking for you. What happened? I've been through a lot too, Hercules, while you were away. Mm. After the British closed our shop, I, I tried to get along somehow. Mm. Needlework, even, even selling thread from door to door, but no one would trade with me. Yeah. Neither Whigs nor Tories. Both sides mistrust us. Mm. My poor dear. How you must have suffered. Wife, I must talk to the Whigs again, and this time they must believe me. No. Yes. No, husband, we must flee from the city. No. The Whigs have threatened that if the British don't hang you, they will. Well, Washington should take New York any day now, and, and then perhaps they'll learn the truth. Oh, we paid a heavy price. Oh, I grant that, wife, I grant that. What I did was right. And had I to do it over again... For my general and my country, I would do it gladly. Over and over and over again. <laughs> and you, wife? I, too, husband. Oh. Molly. Yes, my dear? I love you. Very much. Would you mind? If I kissed you. Oh, husband. I thank you. Very it Washington. Are they as destitute as this? I hear they are penniless and friendless because of his activities on behalf of our cause. Mm. Well, let us not. Yes, gentlemen? What can I... Why? Why? Molly! Molly! Come here, quick! Yes, husband. What is it? Why do you call me... I'm happy to meet you at last, Mr. Mulligan. Oh, and to thank you for what you did for our common cause. Well, thread my needle. I I pinch myself. I'm really not dreaming. I, I'm the happiest man on earth. And, oh, and didn't we give them hail Columbia, sir? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Edmund Gwen. Before we tell you about next week's cavalcade and of the two stars who will appear on it, we have a story of how chemistry is helping to safeguard the pilots of our plane. 8,000 feet up, a mile and a half above the surface of the Earth, Pilots of transport and other planes still run into birds. Sometimes just one bird flying along by itself, sometimes a whole flock of them. But when a plane traveling 200 miles an hour runs into a bird in a head-on collision, it might just as well run into a burst of machine gun slugs. That's what a bird becomes at such a speed. A projectile, a bullet jeopardizing the lives of pilot and passengers. In at least one case, a bird that flew into a windshield went through the whole plane right through it, metal and all. 
If it had struck the pilot, it would have gone through him. If a small bird can do that, think of the damage that can be done by the heavier migratory birds, a wild goose or swan weighing 15 or 20 pounds. Pilots have always worried about birds, especially at night and during the dawn and dusk hours when visibility is poor. Today, after a year of research, a new laminated safety glass enclosure for transport planes has been developed. A windshield that will stop a 15-pound bird at speeds in excess of 200 miles an hour. The new windshield is an example of the way industry and governmental agencies are working together in wartime. Engineers from the Pittsburgh Plate Glass Company and the Libby Owens Ford Glass Company, from the Westinghouse Electric and Manufacturing Company, from DuPont and other chemical companies, worked with the Civil Aeronautics Authority to design and test it. The shatter-resisting windshield is the result of their combined know-how. The glass technicians worked for months making special kinds of glass, checking their results over and over again until they had just the right temper and thickness. The electrical company built an intricate compressed air cannon with an 8-inch bore and a 20-foot barrel. Test projectiles simulating the actual birds in flight were shot from this cannon at high speeds to crash into airplane windshield assemblies. DuPont experts studied the film of DuPont butycide polyvinyl acetyl resin, only 15 thousandths of an inch thick, used in safety glass automobile windshields. They worked on the resin and on the plasticizer that governs its resilience at various temperatures to develop a film many times as thick. The final product is a transport plane windshield like a three-decker sandwich. First comes a layer of highly tempered glass. Then there is an airspace through which hot air is blown to defrost the glass in winter and at high altitudes under icing conditions. Then comes an inner sandwich, two panes of special glass. Laminated between these two inner layers is a sheet of tough butycide half an inch thick. The butycide extends beyond the edges of the glass to anchor the windshield to a reinforced metal frame. It took a year of hard work, but the results are worth it. Safety glass windshields to protect the pilots of America's transport planes. Here is another wartime use for one of the DuPont peacetime better things for better living through chemistry. Most of us, when we hear that word, think of bombs being planted, trains being wrecked, factories being blown up, docks and railroads being destroyed. But there is another kind of sabotage which is carried out so cunningly by Nazi agents that most people don't recognize it. Our play next week, Diary of a Saboteur, is based on material from Sabotage, a bestseller by Michael Sayers and Alfred Kahn, exposing the work of Nazi Germany's psychological laboratory. Our stars will be Joseph Schilkraut and Mildred Natwick. Be with us next week to hear Diary of a Saboteur, starring Joseph Schilkraut and Mildred Natwick, an expose of Germany's secret agent. Edmund Gwen appeared tonight through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer and Catherine Cornell. The part of Molly, the wife in tonight's cavalcade, was played by Adelaide Klein. The orchestra and musical score were under the direction of Don Vorey. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from our sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Thank you.